EEG is an essential tool for recording the brain's electrical activity to gain a deeper understanding and analyze EEG signals. Visualization is an indispensable step. In this lesson, we will introduce how to use Python to visualize EEG signals, helping us intuitively observe and understand these complex physiological data. In Python, there are two main methods for visualizing EEG signals, using the built-in visualization tools of the MEN library or creating custom plots with the matplotlib. First, let's learn how to use the built-in methods of the MEN library for quick visualization. We need to import two key libraries, MEN used for processing and analyzing EEG data, matplotlib used for plotting operations. Next, we define the file path for the EEG signal and load the data file. Here we assume the file is in EDF format. The data can be loaded using the following code. When loading the data, we use the preload equal true parameter. This means the entire down the mate is loaded into memory. While this might consume more memory, it can significantly improve the speed of subsequent data processing. The MNE library offers powerful built-in methods for visualizing data. These methods can be applied using the following code. In this example, we use the raw.plot method to display EEG signals. Two key parameters are specified. Duration equals 10. This shows 10 seconds of data per page. N underscore channels equals 10. This displays 10 channels per page. When loading large data sets, releasing resources is a good practice. We can close the data stream using the following code. Now let's run the code and observe the EEG signal waveforms. This method allows us to quickly explore and analyze the data using the built-in visualization tools of the MNE library offers the following advantages. Simple and efficient. There's no need for complex custom code. The MNE library automatically handles details like time, axes, and channel labels. Highly interactive. It provides an interactive interface that supports zooming, panning, and other operations, making it easy to explore the data. In the code above, we used MNE built-in methods. These methods are ideal for quick and interactive signal browsing. Next, we will learn how to use the matplotlib for deeper analysis and detailed visualization of EEG signals with custom code. We will also import the MNE and matplotlib. Similar to the code above, we first define the path to the EEG signal file and use the MNE library to load the data. After loading the data, we need to extract three key elements, the signal data, time information, and channel names. First, raw get data. This returns a 2D array. Its dimensions are number of channels by number of data points. Next, raw times. This gives us time to oak information in seconds. Each time date corresponds to a data point. Finally, raw channel nones EA. This returns a list containing the names of all channels. To make our plotting process easier, we'll focus on a subset of the data. We'll select only the first 10 channels to plot. We do this by setting num channels to plot to 10. Next, we create a range of these selected channels using range num channels to plot. Now, let's talk about the time frame. We'll extract data for just the first five seconds. To do this, we need to know the sampling rate. We get this from raw information frequency. The sampling rate tells us how many data points are collected each second. Using this sampling rate, we calculate the number of samples for five seconds. It's simple math. We multiply five by the sampling rate. With this information, we can now extract the right amount of data. We slice our data array to keep only the first five seconds for all channels. We do the same for the time information keeping only the time dose for these first five seconds. Now let's visualize our EEG signals using the matplotlib. We'll create individual plots for each of our selected channels. First, we set up the overall figure size using plate figure. We specify a width of 12 inches and a height of 15 inches to give ourselves plenty of room for all 10 channel plots. Next, we use for loop to create a separate plot for each channel. Here is how the process works. For each channel in our selected list, we create a new subplot using subplot. Plot the signal curve with plot. Using our time values for the x-axis and the channel's data for the y-axis, add a title showing the channel name with title. Label the y-axis with microvolts to indicate the unit of measurement. After we have created all 10 subplots, we add a label to the x-axis showing time in seconds. 
We then call tight layout to automatically adjust the spacing between our subplots. This prevents any overlapping between titles, labels, and the plots themselves. Finally, we display the complete figure with plot show. When you run this code, you'll see a figure appear with the 10th of September Arat plots stacked vertically. Each plot shows the electrical activity from a different EEG channel. Let's take a moment to understand what we're looking at. On each plot, the horizontal axis shows time measured in seconds. Since we extracted just the first five seconds of data, each plot will show activity from zero to five seconds. The vertical axis displays the signal amplitude measured in microvolts. This tells us how strong the electrical activity is at each moment. At the top of each subplot, you'll see a title showing the name of the EEG channel being displayed. These names typically indicate where the electrode was placed on the scalp. There are several reasons why Matplotlib is particularly useful for visualizing EEG signals. It offers exceptional flexibility. You can adjust nearly everything about your plots, from the overall size and layout to specific details like line colors, styles, and thicknesses. This means you can create visualizations that perfectly match your specific needs. Matplotlib creates static images that are perfect for presentations and publications. Beyond the basic plotting we've done here, you could add grid lines to better track values, annotations to mark specific events, or even overlay multiple signals for comparison. You might add vertical lines to mark stimulus onsets, or highlight regions of interest with shaded areas.